Hello everybody. Welcome back. Rianne here from Not Just Backs. So I'm going to continue today to talk about pins and needles in the hands and what causes them. Now just to clarify that I'm talking about things that we see commonly in practice. So you can have diabetic neuropathies and you can have pins and needles from um, some, chem um, some drugs and some chemicals and heavy metal poisoning and things like that. I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about things that we see that are common. So last time we were talking about neck issues and having a trapped nerve. And this week I'm going to be talking about something called thoracic outlet syndrome, which is this bit of our neck here. So let's just share the screen because I have some exciting slides to show you. Let's get things in the right place, that's it. So uh, here we can see this, this picture of this area here. So here is our collarbone, collarbone along here, and the scaly muscles, which are at the, the front here as well. And then you can see that the yellow things are the nerves that are coming through, joining the uh, artery, so Flavian artery coming down there. Um, and these nerves are called, in this part, it's called the brachial plexus coming down into the arm. So, <clears throat> and then this bit up here is showing the first rib. So the first rib, ribs are, people don't realize how ribs, they come up really high. So can you see that the first rib here is really close to the collarbone? So your first rib is actually a short little thing that comes around under the collarbone and around the, to the back and joins onto the spine. And it's up here is showing how the first rib and over the top comes the artery and the um, vein and then the little yellow things, the nerve, and then the muscles can compress these, uh, these areas. So I'm just gonna sh just move the slide now. I should have given you a warning for those who don't like gory stuff. <laughs> then to look away, because this is a dissected cadaver showing us just want to recap, showing us the nerves coming out of our neck. So here are our neck roots. So as they come out of the spine, which is what we were looking at last time, when we get a trapped nerve in the neck, it has different levels, and then it causes different sensations in the hand. I showed you that map. And then as they come out, they then come into trunks and divisions and cords. And generally around um, this sort of area is where we get sort of the thoracic entrapment. Sometimes it can be in the scalenes up here as well. So what causes thoracic outlet syndrome? Mostly it's our posture. So I'm gonna talk about our posture quite a bit at the moment, and then I'll give you a few other examples of what else causes it. So as you can see, the man in the middle is standing beautifully. <laughs> we do like a nice, beautiful posture. Um, and then the, the other two are sort of similar, but not quite the same. Um, they both have rounded shoulders, you know, and this one has a slightly flatter back, but has quite a curve through the upper back and then goes into a flat back at the bottom. This young man uh, sways right back and then his shoulders come forward. But we, to have put in really good posture, we draw a little plumb line down our body and it should, which I've said before, should go through our ears, our shoulders, our hips, and then through our ankle. A lot of the time we see postures where the head sticks forward. So if you think about um, our lifestyle today, a lot of phone work, you know, our heads stick forward, that really encourages that. And of course, children on iPads and devices from a young age, and I see it on mine, and it, it just makes me cringe, um, like many parents out there probably. <laughs> and their heads are like this. So if they're starting as little ones in primary school doing this a lot, then what do they expect when they get to adults? Hmm. So rounded shoulders. So this then shortens the muscles that are in that area. So if we go back to our um, we'll, we'll look at this one. We'll go back to this one. These muscles, well actually they're, mm, 
they've been cut away, haven't got quite the right. So this muscle here is our pectoral muscle and, and here, and they've been cut away. Um, but if they get tight, they then impinge on these nerves. Uh, the scalenes, which is up here, which you can't quite see, but it's, and it sits there again, that head forward position shortens those muscles and then can trap on what we call the neurovascular bundle underneath. So it's really important that we have really good posture. So if you do a lot of sitting at work, it might be an idea that you uh, get yourself a sit to stand desk so that you can spend time standing and then you can spend time sitting so that you're not in one position, you're moving around on the phone, um, you're not in one position for the whole day. The other thing that's interesting about this is also um, how we breathe. People, we, well, generally, if we're breathing right, and if you look at little, little children, they breathe from their diaphragms, so right in their lower ribs, and that's great. However, as we go through life and we get stressed and have traumatic things may have occurred to us, especially throughout childhood or as, as adults as well, we tend to then start breathing from our upper ribs. So here we go, here are the ribs up here. Now what happens is that because when we're breathing up here, we're using these neck muscles. We see, it, we see this a lot in practice, using our neck muscles a lot. So they get overworked and again tighter, so then can impinge on these areas. And they can then give, especially in these low, give pain, a pins and needles rather, and numbness in our little finger and ring finger, and sometimes down the border to the elbow. Um, so, so yeah, breathing is really important. Breathing and posture. Um, there are other causes, so, asthmatics again it's that breathing issue um, people are finding it really difficult to breathe they put their arms up to try and get breath and of course these are using your pectoral muscles so ideally we'd like to have some nice breathing exercises to use our diaphragm and to train ourselves to get back into our diaphragm rather than this upper rib breathing um, there's something called a cervical rib I think oh yeah, I've got an x-ray of it to show you, exciting stuff. Um, so oh, a cervical rib, a cervical spine is our neck and uh, th this is, this is our, an x-ray of our neck. So this is the C7 which is the bottom vertebrae of our neck and these little white lines here show a rib coming off our neck, neck vertebrae. So there's our first rib there, and then the second rib. So, and, oh, actually it's long, isn't it? It's quite long. So again, if you think of your uh, blood vessels and nerves, they have to then go over the top of that to come out. Um, so that stretches the vessels and the nerves to get into your arm. So if you have a cervical rib, which one in 200 people do, and of which of those, so that's quite common, isn't it? One in 200, it's, you know, somebody in your town, Several people in Salisbury have cervical ribs. <laughs> and uh, uh, one in 10 will have symptoms. So um, we, as osteopaths, we pick up on these because some you can feel it. Sometimes the rib isn't a rib and it's just a long, so out of each vertebrae is what we call a transverse process. Sometimes it's just a really long transverse process. And, and we can sort of feel those. And several people over the years have sent off for x-rays just to double check when they have these, these pins and needle symptoms in their hands. Um, <clears throat> another cause of the thoracic outlet syndrome is repetitive movement of your arm. So if you've got a manual job, and you're doing especially lots of things up and down above your head, if you're drilling above your head and sports, tennis and all that sort of thing, that will encourage a bit more, more you'll make you more prone, sorry, to getting the thoracic outlet. And then, you know, which we don't see so much because we don't see huge traumas coming in, it's obviously straight away, uh, a whiplash accidents, um, fractures of the collarbone, um, they can then in, in, induce the thoracic outlet syndrome. Of course, we see loads of fractures of collarbones, obviously not at the time, but later on when they've all healed and we see lots of whiplash accidents. 
coming in as well. So those, but whiplash, because obviously it can tighten up muscles and, um, and cause micro trauma in the muscles. So, and you might even just be hunching because of the pain in your neck, your posture changes as well. So that's another reason for thoracic outlet. Um, so that's, that's all very well about thoracic outlet. Next time I see you, I will talk about um, what sort of exercises we can do to A, help our posture, B, help our breathing, and then C, hopefully overall have a change if we're having thoracic outlet sy symptoms. So that's for next time. Uh, I hope you're enjoying learning about pins and needles and a bit about the body. And, uh, and I'll see you for some exercises soon. You take care now. Bye-bye.